Good day, everyone. Today's topic is one that reverberates with the strange, the shocking, and the utterly unexpected. We're going to explore the life and events surrounding Johann de Witt, a notable historical figure whose story ultimately culminates in one of the most horrifyingly brutal scenes in political history. De Witt's tale, from his rise as a politician to his grueling end, serves as a cautionary tale about the volatile world of politics, the power of public sentiment, and the unpredictability of fate. Johann de Witt was a Dutch statesman who was a dominant political figure during the period in Dutch history known as the Dutch Golden Age. Born on September 24, 1625, into a patrician family, de Witt's early life was comfortable and privileged. Raised in the city of Dordrecht, the young Johann was encouraged to pursue intellectual endeavors and engage with the world of politics from a young age. The world that Johann de Witt grew up in was one defined by prosperity and growth. The Dutch Republic was at the height of its power and influence, its prosperity fueling a cultural and scientific renaissance that was admired throughout Europe. It was in this thriving, dynamic environment that de Witt began his political career, following in the footsteps of his father, who was also a politician. In 1650, when he was just 25 years old, de Witt was appointed as the Rod Pensionaris, or Grand Pensionary of Holland. This role, akin to a prime minister, was one of the most powerful in the country. De Witt was tasked with managing domestic affairs and representing Holland in negotiations with foreign powers. Despite his youth, De Witt quickly proved himself to be a skilled and astute politician. He was known for his commitment to the Republic and his resistance to the idea of monarchical rule. Throughout his time in office, De Witt faced numerous challenges both from within the Republic and from outside. He weathered the storms of wars with England navigated the complex and delicate balance of power within the Dutch Republic, and managed to maintain the dominance of Holland over the other provinces. De Witt's tenure was marked by the First and Second Anglo-Dutch Wars, major conflicts that defined his foreign policy and impacted the perception of his leadership. During these wars, De Witt showed exceptional diplomatic and strategic skills. He held the Republic together maintaining a careful balance between the wealthier merchant class and the lesser provinces and led the Dutch to several victories against the English. Despite the success, De Witt was not without his detractors. He was often criticized for his adherence to Republican ideals and his resistance to the House of Orange, which represented the traditional monarchical power in the Netherlands. This conflict of ideologies made him a target for those who believed in the Orangist cause, and they would ultimately play a significant role in his downfall. As a politician, De Witt was known for his pragmatism and his ability to navigate the murky waters of Dutch politics. But it was his commitment to the principles of the Republic and his resistance to monarchical rule that would lead to his undoing. As the years wore on, the Orangists gained more power and influence, and De Witt found himself increasingly isolated politically. In 1672, the Dutch Republic was invaded by France, England, and two German states in what came to be known as the Year of Disaster. De Witt's Republic was ill-prepared for such an attack, and the subsequent military defeat led to a complete loss of public confidence in his administration. The Orangists seized this opportunity to accuse De Witt of being a traitor and demanded his resignation. In August of the same year, De Witt and his brother Cornelius were imprisoned on trumped-up charges of treason. They were held in the Gavengen Port, a medieval prison in the Hog. However, this was only the beginning of their nightmare. Their imprisonment served as a catalyst for public anger, and soon after, an angry mob, incensed by the Orangist's accusations and the Republic's military failures, stormed the prison. In the horrific events that followed, both De Witt brothers were lynched and, in a gruesome display of cannibalistic frenzy, parts of their bodies were reportedly consumed by the mob. 
The horrific death of Johann de Witt served as a potent reminder of the volatile nature of politics and public sentiment. Despite his skills as a statesman and his commitment to the Republic, he ultimately fell victim to political machinations, public anger, and a brutal mob. His grisly end was a stark contrast to the prosperity and intellectualism that defined the Dutch Golden Age, serving as a sobering reminder of the potential dangers of political life. In examining De Witt's life, we see a man who was deeply committed to his ideals and who sought to guide his country through an incredibly complex period of history. Yet, his story is also a stark reminder of the fragile nature of power and the unforgiving landscape of public opinion. The haunting tale of Johann de Witt is not just a chapter in a history book, but a reminder of the darkness that can lurk beneath the surface of society. It challenges us to remember that even in times of prosperity and progress, the specters of fear, manipulation, and mob mentality can still lead to unimaginable horrors. And as we strive for a better future, let's take a moment to reflect on the past, understanding that our actions today are the history of tomorrow.